Welcome to Asian Horizon. Yesterday on August 15, 2021, the Taliban again took over Kabul and now claim the victory in their conquest of Afghanistan. Now, former President Ashraf Ghani fled with his wife, the director of his office and his national security advisor to Tashkent in Uzbekistan. International diplomats and embassy staff are now fleeing Afghanistan, flying out of Kabul, NATO maintaining presence and control of Kabul airport until most or all international staff have left Kabul. Now the question is what is going to happen going forward? Well, first of all, in the coming days, weeks and months, Taliban is going to cement its control. Now they will also claim the new name, the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, as the official name of Afghanistan, also taking over control of Afghan sources and funding in terms of its roles internationally, both in foreign service, internet intelligence services, and all other roles in international organs and organizations where Afghanistan is represented. Strategically, the question is, what does this mean? Well, first of all, interestingly enough, Russia is going to maintain embassy staff and diplomats at its embassy in Kabul. I think fairly soon we're also going to see China recognizing Taliban as the legitimate government in Afghanistan. Until now, Russia has registered Taliban as a terrorist group. I think that may change. The fact that Russia is also going to maintain diplomats at its embassy in Kabul, in a way, is also a tacit recognition of Taliban as the official government in Afghanistan. However, we're probably going to see Moscow come up with a statement in the coming days, as we also probably will see from Beijing. However, in terms of the Western world, the European Union, the United States, we're probably not going to see any recognition of the Taliban as the official government in Afghanistan until the EU and the US have coordinated. Remains to be seen whether or not the US and the EU will come out with a statement uh, together or separately. Uh, however, in terms of the coming uh, weeks and months, we're also going to see some other strategic alignments. First of all, uh, India has been investing heavily in Chabahar port in Iran, and that has kind of, kind of been India's gateway into Afghanistan. That is not probably going to end. So strategically, there's going to be a realignment. First of all, I think China and Russia are going to continue their focus on infrastructure investments along with Central Asian countries and Pakistan, as well as with the Taliban now being basically the government in Afghanistan and taking over control. They're also going to invite Taliban to discussions and negotiations of how to find a strategic path forward for infrastructure investments in terms of other investments as well. It remains to be seen how soon that will take place. But I think that as soon as possible, both Russia and China would like uh, the situation to calm down and the situation basically to go on as much as normal as possible. In terms of other terrorist groups operating in Afghanistan, remains to be seen how that continues. The Islamic State Khorasan, which has basically been the IS outfit operating inside Afghanistan, probably has approximately 2,200 members, uh, more or less according to UN report. That number could rise. Uh, remains to be seen how much focus Taliban will place on fighting the IS presence in Afghanistan or potential other groups. Uh, however, Taliban has claimed that they are not going to accept uh, any terrorist groups to kind of build or facilitate their own training uh, to conduct attacks externally. Um, but, but remains to be seen uh, whether or not Taliban really will be focusing on that. So in the long term, the cycles of history may come back. It uh, remains to be seen whether or not there will be any terrorist groups staging attacks outside Afghanistan after having trained, in, trained inside Afghanistan. That remains to be seen. But for now, for the time being, Taliban is again in control in Kabul and in Afghanistan after a 10 days a very swift raid and conquest across Afghanistan in which they maintained and st strengthened their control along all the borders and across the country. So going forward will remain, remains to be seen what happens, 
But what I think we can really now state with clarity is that the Western world in terms of NATO countries, the EU and the US have no longer any influence in Afghanistan and it's very unlikely that they will also get that very soon. Therefore, the shift now strategically is much more in another direction. And I, I think China and Russia will now do what they can to focus on strategic investments and strategic growth for Afghanistan also to be integrated in the Eurasian landscape in the future. It remains also to be seen whether or not China and Iran in negotiations with Taliban will build an infrastructure corridor across Afghanistan from China, across the Wakhan Corridor, the Hindu Kush Mountains, all the way across Afghanistan to Iran. That could be a part of the China-Iran strategic agreement going forward if Taliban accepts such a scenario in which they could build an economic corridor. It's going to be in Taliban's interest to have investments and economic development across Afghanistan because that from a Taliban perspective will also strengthen their legitimacy inside Afghanistan. And I think now comparing Taliban's current situation compared with that of the 1990s, I think Taliban wants to have a much more a stronger role in terms of international recognition and also strengthen its position internally. And then they will need to develop Afghanistan economically for that to be a viable role in the future. Well, thank you so much for joining and please remember to subscribe to Action Horizon. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.